What's up? You're watching Libs Dramatist, the most undefined show on the internet. I'm your host, Tori, and as always, I'm joined by my cryptid co-host. Anyway, hello. Welcome back to my floor. Uh, today we have a very special video. It is a video I've been working on for over a year, and then I started it with last summer, uh, and then just didn't ever finish it. So, yeah. This, look, Andy, it's finally getting done. Woo! Um... Yeah, so I started it last summer because it was supposed to come out on um, the one year anniversary and now here it is going to be a couple days later than this two year anniversary. Um, but now you might be sitting here asking yourself, what is this video? Well, if you read the title, you know. Um, but if you don't, <laughs> this is a video recapping the entire first year of... I don't think calling it a phenomenon is fair. Uh, the personality that is Dignan from Hive Mind. So let's just, let's jump into parts of it. Now, who is Dignan? For those of you who don't know, he's one of the three main co-hosts for the YouTube channel, Hive Mind, which talks about music, mostly in rap. And then they do other fun things like brackets for the best gas station snack. He is joined by two other men, originally from Ohio, who now live in Detroit, named Riley, who has a graphic design degree, and Graydon, who has a letterbox account. Now, as I've put their pictures up on screen, you might be going, huh, Dignan and Graydon look awfully similar. Maybe even identical. Um, well, they're not the same person. So, let's just get that out of the way. Um, so, to make sure we can also make it a difference, I have a little game for us all to play. Uh, called is it Dignan or Graydon? So here's photo one. Is it Dignan or Graydon? Answer is Dignan. Photo two. Same question as before. Answer, Dignan. Photo three. Who do we think it is? It's Graydon. Or is it? Am I lying to you? You'll never know. But you see what I mean? It, like, it's not that hard to tell them apart. It's pretty obvious. Now, before we fully jump into who is Dignan, what do we know about him? Uh, I'd like to introduce two other people who are somewhat relevant to this story. One of them, DJ Grant, doesn't show up at all, but is relevant enough to the channel. It feels rude not to mention him. DJ Grant organizes games and is normally behind camera, not on. So... Hence the photo. He also is kind of like the godlike presence of Hive Mind, in my mind. The last person I'm going to introduce is Quadeca, who is a rapper and friend of the show, whose music I've never listened to. I'd say I'm sorry, but I'm a very busy girl. Phoebe Bridgers isn't going to run up those streams by herself, is she now? Um, so now that we have everyone introduced, let's look into Dignan uh, and his first year of YouTube. Uh, first, I'd like to get into a few disclaimers. Because I did all of this research a year ago. I was not going to rewatch like 40 odd videos for this. Okay, so some of these might be bits. Some of what I excluded because I thought they were bits based on memory might be actual things. So like just know that this is a little fluid. Also, when I go through everything, I'm going to just be saying the date the video was released because that's a lot quicker than saying the title. So with that said, Let's get into it. <laughs> we are first introduced to Dignan on July 14th, 2023, in the video Guess the Rapper from Quadeca's Style of Rap. At approximately like 6 minutes 48 seconds, Graydon reveals that he is Dignan. Well, maybe next time you'll take the performance enhancers I offer you before the game. Well, those have crazy side effects. So what? They literally make you feel drunk for like three weeks. So what? I mean, I can't even function on those things. They're dissociatives, dude. My name's Dignan. From now on, you're gonna call me Dignan. I'm gonna call you Dignan? That's my name now. And from there, we go on to learn a few more things about him in the episode. Uh, parts of it are that he wishes he looked like a green bean. His um, limit is 44 shots when he goes to bars and he has now shit the bed for the third time this week in a row due to a dream about Grimace on a trampoline 
where he breaks it and lands on Diggy, which is his own nickname for himself. Uh, you know, just, just normal things, normal fun things to learn about people. Um, and then he kind of rounds out the episode by saying all the comments about him are negative, first appearance. Uh, he has never seen any of the videos he, that they've made, valid, um, and that he has died years ago. So with that as our baseline, let's jump into the entirety of this timeline. And we'll follow episode order, not necessarily the order in which these events would have happened in Damon's life, because we're going with how he revealed information to us. So we start with July 21st, and from here on out, I'm not gonna say the year. I'm sure you can figure that out. I'll tell you, you'll, you'll know when we switch years. You know how a calendar works, don't you? If not, should you be watching this? Or should you be in school? Questions for you and for me, both and neither. So July 21st, um, we learned that he has done all of P90X in two days. In doing this, he broke some bones, but shredded his muscles and passed out. Uh, he reveals that he has no history and just came to be. This is an important fact to remember for later. Uh, we also learn that he loves Miller Lights. I mean, it must just be like a guy thing to want to drink bread water. Um, and has wet brain, uh, which gives him self-doubt. So on July 26th, we learn that after the show, he's going to drink six beers but can't have eight because of how he gets, but his limit is 44 shots. So I don't know how that translates. He was afraid of Courage the Cowardly Dog as a kid, weren't we all? Um, thinks the government is hiding invisibility technology from us. Uh, believes that nobody cares in the world it's going to end. And then also states his opinions on bald people, uh, which is, any bald person that also doesn't have facial hair sucks, uh, but J.K. Simmons is an exception to this rule. He then also goes on to state uh, that he does hate J.K. Rowling. A lie. On August 2nd, we learn that Dignan has gone to prison, though we don't know for what, uh, but he's currently on furlough to be able to film his videos. This also sparks a free Dignan movement, but he claims to like going to prison and likes participating in the mind games. We go on to learn more about his prison experience where he states he is making friends, which include his parents, who are his bunkmates. Um, so, fun, I guess he's never met his parents before. Um, he has only been in for three days, but has already learned all of the Arabic language. Um, we also learn that like Graydon, he has a very extensive sports knowledge, um, and that he has eaten beaver and weasel. That's just a fun fact thrown in at the end there. On August 7th, this is important, it's not a Dignan episode, it's a Graydon episode, and when asked about the free Dignan movement, Graydon responds, reform is good for some people, uh, implying that he believes Dignan should stay in prison, which is then confirmed on August 9th when he states that he is happy that Dignan is still in prison. August 11th, Dignan comes back. Uh, he is still in prison, but we still don't know what for. Uh, he tells us that the warden says the video has to get 4,000 likes uh, for him to let Dignan make more videos. We also learn Dignan's entire diet, which is 4 a.m. he wakes up and eats a whole tube of toothpaste. At 6 or 7 a.m., depending, when sugar cravings hit, he eats a 12-pack of Krispy Kreme donuts, but he has to wear them like rings when he does so. Um, lunch is a cold-cut Dagwood. Dinner is whatever he pulls out of a hat, which last night was chocolate spaghetti. Interesting that he's able to do all of this still in prison, but as we learn more about the prison, it's more of a Paddington-esque, a Paddington 2-esque situation than anything. So, uh, we also learned that he dated a CrossFit girl who ripped the tires off of his car with her bare hands to be able to sell them. Um, uh, we also learned that he loves to sing and is obsessed with the band The Bare Naked Ladies, 
and that his parents are dead. I guess his parents, his former prison bunkmates have died. Um, moving right along on August 22nd, we learn that Dignan is 64 and ready to mingle. He wants to date ladies. Uh, he also doesn't shower because it's not environmentally friendly. Don't know how that's affecting his dating life, but here we are. Uh, he is addicted to perks uh, at two milligrams and takes 80 a day, uh, calling it microdosing. Uh, he is from, and forgive me if I mispronounce this, Talon, Mexico, but grew up in Flagstaff, Arizona, where his mother was the mayor, and he had a little sister who is physically bigger than him. So we learn more about his mother's background. We know nothing about his father's background and he will never bring it up. Uh, so in prison, he's a part of the an improv group uh, so he doesn't get killed. Um, but he doesn't want to be on the warden's cheerleading squad because there's like something going on there. Um, he also reveals that Blade, the rapper, is his cousin and dig this is his new catchphrase. To round out the episode, he reveals he doesn't know how he got on the show, that he was and still is a lifelong criminal since the age of about 15 or 16, and most importantly to this episode, this is where we get the first instance of Diggy Don't Care No More. On August 28th, we learn that Dignan is out on work release from prison, and he works at Radio Shack, to which Riley goes, aren't they all closed down? And he goes, yeah, it's a cover so I can go back to my old ways. His old ways are stabbing people. Presumably, what he's in prison for, he also reveals that he has learned dark magic in prison. So good for him. On September 4th, we learn some more personal details to his life. And I want you to know this is the order they come up in the video as I state them. We know that his wife cheated on him, uh, that his third wife cheated on him, with Fortnite and had kids. Uh, don't know if this is the same as a previous wife who cheated on him. He is 6'5". That is the order in the video. <laughs> Please come on. Um, this video also reveals that Dignan knows a lot about dogs, but is also important to me for a different reason, because it is the video in which Riley says he would like to live in Omaha for like two years and chase storms which I think is an insane decision as someone who has lived in Omaha for a majority of their life. Why <laughs> would you do that? <laughs> um, I get you like Bright Eyes, like I do, but it's just a bar. The bar, the Bright Eyes bar, I don't even remember what it's called, but it's just a bar with books. It's not that interesting. Um, but I will say, cause I think you would find this entertaining slightly to go into your storm chasing thing. We do have a minor league baseball team. They're called the Storm Chasers, and this is what their mascot looks like. It is a tornado with a baseball bat through it to make the nose. All I'm gonna say, I hope you reconsider that life choice. Um, we also learn at the end of this episode that Dignan loves casinos and is newly freed from prison and is now a partial co-host. Yay! September 18th, we learn he eats a Beats pill every morning. You know, the speaker. And that he's never had a vegetable and that he tailgates at football games while drinking and throws peanuts at cop cars. So. October 9th, we learned he's bald below the waist or down there, as he said. Um, and that he has to go to court to pick which parent to live with. But he's been an adult for over a decade. This gets weird because he said his parents are dead. So maybe he, these are like, maybe there's like a step parent on each side. I don't know, but his parents are dead because to pick which one to live with, it's complicated. Um, and that they, that he doesn't have a choice about going to court to make this decision because they are getting a divorce again they're getting double divorced. Um, and that he has just started watching Spongebob, but Ridiculous remains his favorite show, and that he likes women for their minds. Good for him. On October 13th, he reveals that he's a huge Quadaka fan and that he has a human-sized birdcage. This might be related and might imply some scheme he has, but it is not openly stated. 
uh, he reveals in fifth grade his flag football name was Pinky uh, and thinks that it's a problem that little kids are picking up British accents from Peppa Pig, which as someone who's been living in England for almost a year, the London accent's not like heavy anymore. They really ham it up for Peppa. Um, he does have a kill list on set and it's hidden just out of frame behind Riley's chair and that he has bought Quadeca a dog collar, which ties back in my mind to the birdcage and might be a threat against Quadeca's autonomy. So moving forward on October 23rd, we learned that he went to Chattanooga for a cigarette smoking competition. One, smoked 16 cartons in, in an hour, which is around 3,200 cigarettes. Uh, and his lungs are now like coal. He also smokes crack about two to three times a week, freebasing style. He was on crutches for four years emotionally, but also got shot in the kneecaps during that time. Uh, his mother used to write him notes about how bad he was at smoking crack to put in his lunch, and that he sells his plasma for Bitcoin. On November 1st, he reveals that he thinks the world is 20 years old, which is odd because he is canonically 64. So how does that work? Uh, unlike Graydon, he does not like old school music. Um, his whole, it reveals his whole chest is a nipple. This episode is also interesting because it is where they discuss um, when partners spit in your mouth and everyone on set but Dignan reveals that they like it. So that includes Riley, Quadeca, who's guesting, and DJ Grant, all are okay with people spitting in their mouths. Dignan is vehemently against it. Um, on November 9th, he reveals that his doctor has told him he cannot look at cheeks this month. He's bought six cat girls with cat coin and says Jesus was a whore because he was a Pisces. And you know what? Maybe he's right. Uh, he has been used uh, as a catfish on an online dating profile before and thinks being French is worse than lying, hates love, likes to go to the opera on LSD, is trying not to stab anyone anymore, be more positive and more mindful, uh, and hates the cops. On November 15th, um, we learned that he had a Graydon jersey that he burned after Graydon failed to score points in the last game on the channel. Um, he is going straight edge and is no longer swearing and is going sober as of this video. This doesn't even last the video. Um, he, he talks about a movie that's being filmed in Indonesia for 18 months about his life where Larry David and Winona Ryder play his parents. Okay. This year he reveals he's going to do Hanukkah. Good for him. Uh, he does stab people under the mistletoe, so maybe Hanukkah's a good switch. He gets emails to kill people, upon which further discussion with Riley reveals that he may or may not have been a hitman. It also is revealed that he isn't getting paid from Hiveline. Uh, and that he doesn't have a house, and that all checks are being sent to his ex's house. So which one? We don't know. November 23rd, uh, we learned that he has an unfinished back piece of Madonna, but it's not a tattoo, it's like a brand, like when you brand cattle, uh, that he can't we. Well, that's, that's a little funny. They can't read. He is a Swifty, though, so good for him. As a kid, he had a friend who was a Civil War reenactor who would shoot himself out of a cannon into Dignan's backyard because they had a net, but died when they moved because the new neighbors put in a spike garden. We also learned that he lost his virginity at South Carolina Lowe's lumber section. We're not sure when this is, but I don't think I need more than that for that information. We learned that he has sepia colored contacts um, did multi-voter in 2016 with five for Trump, five for Hillary, and ten for Bernie. Uh, and in high school he would get blackout every night. On November 29th, he tells us he's done ketamine and that his soul is in a different part of the room currently while filming. He reveals that he is ticklish, uh, and this is when Dinky Don't Care No More is brought back up. On December 1st, he says Mr. Capitalism is his dad. 
that he thinks the Quaker Oats guy is cute. Um, and bought a mixtape off a guy for $3 in Cincinnati outside a gas station that samples the same song that they are listening to in the game. And then gets upset when Grant won't take it as a valid answer. Um, states, John Mulaney is his future because he's bound for rehab. Uh, he has passed a lot of bars in prison, like the test to be a lawyer, um, and that sometimes he does miss prison. We learned that his second wife was named Molly Prokotit, uh, and that he has fixed his gender problem, but this is a joke on Riley as he then shakes it all off on him. December 4th, um, he reveals that he has his mom tell her friends that he's a social media manipulator, but again, I thought his mom was dead, but who am I to tell him that? Uh, he, apparently that morning he was on a construction site and he likes to watch The Masked Singer and Masked Dancer and believes that a classic four course meal is a bowl of cereal, wrong noodles, same type of noodles, but cooked, followed by a sucker for round four and that he is always playing music at his house and had almost 90,000 minutes that year and ends the episode by revealing that he punched a guy who was choking at a restaurant because he thought he was French but ended up saving his life and now he gets free meals for life at that restaurant. So at least there's that for him. On December 13th we learn that he tries not to think too much followed by the statement diggy no like thinky. I'm just gonna leave that one there. Uh, and then I just think it's important to note in that episode that they do sing uh, Cher's uh, Believe in the post credits. On December 27th, we learned that he is not proud to be an American. He supports trans rights, went to church a lot as a kid, says that keeping weed illegal makes it cooler, which to be honest, he might be right. Uh, and that he robs a bank one of two ways. Jumping over the counter and just robbing the place, or he marries a bank teller, waits 14 years, uh, then after that he memorizes her schedule, goes to work dressed up as her to rob the bank, and that he has done this four times in four different states. That would mean that's 56 years of doing this. So either he's running these cons at the same time, or he's been 56 of, mind you, the 64 years he's been alive doing this, um, but that he only has $2,000 in his savings and that he used to have six ferrets that would be a belt. I don't know if these were live or dead and I can't decide which is worse. So we're just going to move on to December 29th where he says KSI is Lord and he is a big fan. Uh, thinks Graydon is super hot, which is interesting because Graydon has not liked Dignan, but I think this shows a point where they start coming around to each other. Um, he also reveals that his cousin was in Free Willy as an extra slash stand-in for when uh, the whale jumps over the kid, like in the poster, and that he died the same day he filmed that in a car crash. He was six and the driver. Uh, he also reveals that he did not graduate college, but also didn't go to class. Are we surprised? Uh, in, on January 8th, it is revealed Diggy doesn't like Jay-Z. Uh, he hates Australian psych rock. Uh, his love language is sex. Uh, he hates the movie Up and Pixar. Uh, and can't get jobs because Riley keeps making up lies about his life. Uh, like he released canaries in a butterfly house. Um, he tried applying to UNICEF and the Peace Corps, but can't because he's stabbed people. Uh, and as a child went to pregnancy races with his dad. So January 17th, we learned that he loves Dave Gruel, uh, considers himself a postman, but is not a real postman. He just rearranges people's mail to try and create communities like he gives one neighbor another neighbor's mail so they they have to go up and be like hi i have your mail uh but the city will never work with him again mostly because of the mail thing and he has farted during a fight
uh, on January 24th, he reveals that his uncle once fell asleep with 14 cigarettes on his chest, uh, but ended up being flame retarded. Um, he once took Molly and went scuba diving uh, and had his Zune on him, which for those of you who don't know, was the original competitor to the iPod and got electrocuted. Um, Shrimp Life was the first album he and Riley ever danced to. And then Riley left saying, after he said he would never leave, and it's also kissed Dignan like he's never been kissed before. So there's a fun little fact about Dignan and Riley's relationship. Um, they also have only known each other for six months. Um, he misses ba Bath Punk. <laughs> he misses Daft Punk, uh, who he refers to as those French fucks, although he has a history of hating the French. So here we also start to see him come around on the French as well. On February 1st, we learn that he loves Mary Poppins, uses a voice on set, and misses his parents. On February 7th, we learn he's a fan of touch tunes at bars, which is like the modern equivalence of a jukebox. Um, and played what you, the song, What You Wouldn't Do For Love for three hours at a bar in Cincinnati, but someone ripped the cord out of the wall to stop it by the sixth play. So. On February 16th, it is revealed that he is four days sober, good for him, that he's a playboy outside of the show where he pretends to care about love. Uh, he has seen all of Gossip Girl and lost all of strength after his accident. The accident was that he peed himself. Uh, February 19th, all we learn about him really is that he, he uses the term auntie instead of aunt and has an auntie Lynn. So going on to February 20th, he gets distracted by Riley's Starbucks logo on his cup and reveals that he has a crush on her, right? And by the end of the day, by the end of the episode reveals that he is going on a date with the cup. Uh, it was also revealed that he spins a little Caesar sign on Six Mile and invented the triple twirl where he stood on his sign while it was spinning is very competitive about being a sign spinner. So, you know what? It's good to have passions. He does also threaten to end this town Joker style during that episode, this town being Detroit. Uh, it's also revealed he never went to his prom and he's going to watch all of the Fast and Furious movies and has a lot of Adderall to help him do so. March 8th, um, he decides if he keeps getting skunked in the first three questions, he will go goose mode where he honks and flaps his arms like wings and then will poop all over the studio. He does end up going goose mode and while doing so states that he also doesn't like it. He also reveals that he has a porpoise mode where he blows confetti out of his blowhole. He does not do this one. Um, he also s reveals a sad fact that everyone has said they don't like the single version of him. He then goes on to make a $12 bet with Riley that Olivia Rodrigo will have a rap feature on her next album. And based on the fact, I think she's in like the Kid Leroy friend group. That's like actually kind of a really safe bet. Like, you know, it wouldn't be weird at this point is all I'll say. He then threatens to fight Riley with his 8.3 million followers on Instagram that he bought and then complains about only getting 20 likes on each post. So I'll leave that on March 22nd. Um, in reference to the song Pushing P, he reveals that he is a full-blown pesbian and he also turns around the Diggy Don't Care No More into Diggy Don't Play No More because he's here to win. So he's like not playing around. Um, he does ask the audience to picture him grinding uh, in a baggy suit that does not fit him in reference to how he was at like high school dances, even though he never went to his high school prom, but okay. Uh, specifically in reference to the song Crank That by Soldier Boy. He then goes on to write winner across his chest, which isn't like important, just like something that did happen. 
um, and reveals that the official fan base name is the Dig Writers. March 26th is an episode that Digna is not in, but Riley and Graydon are discussing if they ever released action figures and they were like, what would be the rarest be? Uh, and they decide that the rarest action figure they could ever release is Dignan smoking base. <laughs> On April 1st, it is revealed that Dignan killed four people in Guantanamo Bay in 2006. Um, also that he likes to mess with scammers when they call. He wants to post an audio clip of him singing the Michael Jackson song Thriller on SoundCloud, but claim it's from the 1950s just to start drama. Which you know what, if you're gonna start drama, that's kind of fun drama to start and I would support it. Uh, he does say he hates ABBA, which I don't support and calls it a horror circus. What's it like to not have taste? Uh, all I'm gonna say, Summer Night City, really good song. And it reveals that he always pisses on the saran wrap that Riley will put on the toilet for April Fool's Day. On April 5th, it is stated that he prays that Machine Gun Kelly will stop releasing music. And honestly, don't we all? Don't we all? Someone should also take social media away from him. Uh, and that he has had a dead baby raccoon cooking on a grill in his lap uh, the whole episode and that he found the whole raccoon family in his basement. It also reveals that all of his money is kept in gold, which is odd because I don't know where this money's from because apparently he doesn't get paid. Um, he's also found $20 in a Campbell's soup bowl of chili once in 1999. So April 16th, uh, we learn that to him, a clean cut professional is more attractive than ASAP Rocky or Rihanna goes on to shout out Chris Pratt, someone whose views are pretty opposed to his. So April 30th, we revealed he had cheated on his wife in 2004. Again, we aren't sure which one of the three this is. And that he thinks comedy slapstick tragedy are the future of film. Oh no. He thinks action comedy and then a slapstick tragedy are the future of film. Uh, but when Riley suggests they make out to add spice to their videos, Dingram reveals he'd rather be spanked. Uh, he also reveals that he loves blondes um, and would order misprint fatheads like uh, Aaron Rodgers, but with no arms, and then he would draw on what was missing. On May 4th, it was revealed that he has an Android phone and that he did a fan art of the guy in the fur on January 6th, and he's no longer allowed on Twitter because of it. Uh, when he lived with Riley, he had a poop emoji pillow. Um, and he wants you to DM him if you look like the Statue of Liberty, followed by the statement, French ladies, what's up? Uh, so he's really come around on his opinion on the French or he's playing a long con, one of the two. Um, he uses olive oil instead of soap, has a weather support group. Uh, and then every time he's on their Instagram story, his mother responds with heart eyes emoji, the only use he likes that emoji for. Um, he also reveals that his ex-wife was a triple ax murderer, but won't tell us which one. Uh, on May 11th, he reaffirms that he is a Daft Punk super fan uh, and said that we can bully him to the tune of $10 million. So we can bully him if we give him $10 million. Uh, and you know what? You can do the same for me. You can only boil, boil, bully me if you give me money um and it is revealed that he did perhaps the second worst thing you could do with a guitar in high school he played first day of my life by bright eyes to girls the first is wonderwall by oasis and i say this as an oasis defender i do like oasis but that is one of the worst things you can do with a guitar on May 19th, he states that he likes masks, especially when they hide his identity, and that he might be stealing from Riley because he knows all of Riley's passwords. Uh, he has asked a dry cleaner to clean his body before, and he wants Mountain Dew to bring back Blackout. Also that he would marry Pa Mescal. As we can see, Dignan is a man of taste, class, and culture. Um, on June 1st, 
We learned that he has pissed the bed again last night and has to start sleeping in a garbage bag again because of it. He thinks Cedar Point is where you go when you die uh, and reveals that manual, like, like the car type, uh, is a ghost on set that he starts talking to, but Manuel is never seen again, or at least heard from again. On July 2nd, uh, in another video where Dignan is not present, it is revealed that Graydon believes Dignan should have been on that year's XXL freshman list. Uh, and when Riley counters with Dignan doesn't have music, Graydon states that Diggy raps in the car for him and that he has done the whole alphabet. Uh, and that he has heard Diggy's new album and wanted it to be on Rolling Stone's top albums of all time. I think this is great. It really shows that Dignan and Graydon are now friends and they hang out outside of the show. No. Uh, on July 5th, it is revealed he's a King Geo guesser. Uh, this is the first introduction of the phrase Diggy lore. Uh, he is pro choice uh, and that his mother has a new kid it's a baby brother and then he restates that he has a sister he really wants you to know he has a sister and this is where it gets interesting he now claims to be 61 even though he has been 64 up until this point so either he in a benjamin button type situation is rapidly getting younger or one of these is a lie so he also reveals that uh, he used to have two horses named Poker and Teddy from the country, and then he has anti-animal abuse. Lots of good stances from him. Uh, on July 9th, we learn that he is going back to religion, uh, and but he has a bunch of drugs that they are they can get together and test after the video is over. Uh, he will fight conservatives, um, which is cool of him. Uh, and also that he can pull out a tablecloth without spilling anything um, and will pay for a meal without ordering because that's the kind of guy he is. And then in the final episode of this year, of the first year of Dignan, on July 13th, he agrees that he's going to delete his Instagram um, and is reminded of when he was mentally locked up for six months, which was almost as bad as the time he was audited. I'm not surprised that he was audited. Uh, it feels like I might be audited in my life, but that's just because I don't know how to do my taxes. I assume his was crime. Um, he doesn't feel bad for crypto people losing their money, even though he himself has invested in cryptocurrency. Um, reveals that he has Harry Styles shaved into his ass currently. Um, and that he killed the last guy he tattooed, but really wants to give Riley a tattoo. So don't know what that means for Riley's personal safety around him. And then the last thing we learn about him in his first year on Hive Mind is that in high school, when he went to go buy weed in a trailer park, he was also offered an Uzi. So that kind of wraps up everything we know about Dignan from his first year. Um, I thought it would be fun as a little treat to rack up but this kind of section of the video that I would go through and because I noted them all down, I will tell you every descriptor that Riley has used to describe Dignan. So in one year, it's like a, like 40 odd videos. I think it might be like 42 or something. Dignan was introduced as Riley's monstrous, piping hot, argumentative, innocent till proven guilty, surprisingly old, carnivorous, flirtatious, speedy, toxic but funny, fiery, telepathic, creationist, filthy, villainous, vacuous, divisive, minty fresh, nauseous, dull, star-spangled, sorry, skeletal, toasted, local, destructive, buzzing, crinkle-cut, bona fide, cologne-infused, sugary, yesified, foolish, original, shysty, cool ranch, rotten, stout, backwards, critically panned, timely, seedless, and catatonic co-host. So in these last two sections, I would like to go over some more interesting stuff about Dignan, starting with the controversy he was involved in. 
this controversy boiled down to that people thought Dignan wasn't real because him and Graydon were never seen on screen together, but Dignan was also brought in to cover for Graydon, so how would they be on screen together if one of them can't be there, you know? But yeah, it basically comes out of them never being seen in a video together, them being very identical, them having some same personality traits, which is interesting. This controversy, however, has been resolved by both Dignan and an outside source. Uh, first, on August 22nd, when Dignan makes the case that he is real and has a history and a long list of friends and family on Facebook, which is interesting because in one of his first couple appearances, he states that he had no history. Um, but then on October 5th, uh, it is confirmed by Quadeca in one of their rare vlogs that Dignan is a real person. One thing a lot of people don't know is that hive mind. It was my idea. Really? I came up with it back in 2013, and currently I'm in the process of suing Hivemind and getting a 25% royalty for all of their future endeavors because I came up with the idea of Hivemind, I came up with the color palette, I came up with the yellow wall, and Graydon didn't exist until I birthed him out of my birthing human factory. Dignan is, is another story though, that's actually a real guy. This thus clears up the controversy and we move on to accept Dignan fully as a real person and the third co-host. Now, for this last section of the video, I want to go through something I noticed while compiling all of this stuff. Throughout many of the episodes, Dignan pitches ideas, whether those be business plans, just general ideas, or something else. Uh, and some of them are interesting enough that I feel like I would like to give my opinions, but I will list all of them because there's not too many. Uh, these will also follow the order in which they were pitched, but won't have dates because there's no need for that. Um, so let's get into it. His first pitch was Quadiki torches, tiki torches that the rapper Quadeca releases. Kind of obvious, kind of boring, kind of basic, but inventive nonetheless. Uh, his next pitch is off-season sports where athletes can take as many drugs as they want. I think this would be so interesting. I'm like, why not? Why not do one Olympics where everyone just gets to do as many steroids as they want? It'd be interesting to see how fast can we really get people to go, you know? But also, as long as they're being healthy about it, like obviously I don't want people to die or anything. Um, uh, pitches tiny Jenga for bars where you need to have chopsticks. I'm sure Jenga has already released a game small enough that you could use chopsticks, but also I'm not a Jenga fan, so I don't really care about this one. Uh, he pitches racing snails during their show to increase live betting. I'm not for, I'm not against, it's just there as a thought. It was interesting. Uh, once a boat zoo like Noah's Ark run by Joe Exotic after he gets out of prison and offers to pitch it to Joe if he sees him in prison. Now I think the concept of doing something like a Noah's Ark is interesting, but then you run into all these issues of if you're so anti-animal abuse, can you realistically do this safely to the animals? You know? Um, uh, he also pitches out The Diggy Show, where he just fights a live wild animal every episode. And you know what? A small part of me would like to watch him fight some wild animal. I'm not saying it necessarily needs to be one that he, like, could actually be killed by, but it'd be interesting to see. Um, he wants to start a book club called The Band of Book Clubs, but they just read banned autobiographies, so you got, like, Journey or something which is kind of funny, good, very marketable, honestly, especially for their channel and their brand. Uh, he asked that Spotify release the top most, the top 40 most followed people's Spotify raps. And you know what? He's right. I want to know. I do want to know because I'm nosy and we know that. Um, rated R hair part with drugs. Eh. Cigarettes that make your voice higher. Could be fun, but it's just quicker to do it with helium, isn't it? Um, duck mode Uber where your uber shows up and it's a duck in it. You know what? I don't see a huge problem with this. Could be fun. Uh, AI generated voices from people that we had never heard. I feel like we already have this probably somehow with where AI has gotten from this pitch to now. Uh, he pitches long distance touch tunes. So like if your friend is in a bar in a different state, you can play a song for them in their bar. 
scent nice, but also like you cause a lot of havoc with that. So I get why it doesn't exist. He asks for a bastard Tyler's version where he has a 12 minute in track. And while that would be very interesting to watch someone like Tyler revisit all of their old discography, I think maybe it's better that he is not the one who does that. Um, he wants to add Valid into the based cringe conversation, another thing I think has happened. Uh, he wants to do a crane machine with hedgehogs, which again is odd for someone who's anti-animal abuse. Um, he wants, he pitches a restaurant uh, where every floor has a different food in it, which is like, I swear it's something I've seen before, but would be fun to go nonetheless. Um, and then the last thing he pitches is a buck rock cover of Imagine. And I think the song Imagine has suffered enough in the last five years that we don't need to do anything else to it. Um, yeah, so those are all of his pitches. So to kind of conclude and wrap all of this up, what have we learned? To be quite honest, not much, but we have learned that Dignan is a real individual separate from Graydon. Um, and he's been around for just over two years now, which is really cool. Uh, we've learned a lot about his life, though a lot of it doesn't make sense, like his age, are his parents alive? You know, what did he go for, to prison for? Which ex-wife was a triple X murderer? Fun things. Um, I like to think it was Molly. She's the only one he ever named. Um, but even though his history is a little fuzzy, we've learned that he can pitch some pretty good ideas. Um, not always, but some of the times. And just on a personal note, to wrap all of this up, I would like to thank you for sitting through this whole video. It is the most scripted video I've done, and you might have been able to see me looking at my laptop the whole time. I'm sorry, I don't have the memory for that. <laughs> uh, but this was great. Uh, and I guess here is where if I was hive mind, I would leave you with some advice to lead or live your lives by. Uh, and what I have for that currently is if you want a year to get someone else to do it, not the poor master student. Uh, yeah, but with all of that said, I hope you've enjoyed so much. Uh, I'm glad I finally got this done and I will see you guys next time. Okay, bye. Dignan has four, I have four. Especially when they hide his identity. Here's where I tell you about something I had recently I had a croissant that was like in a cube and it had filling in the middle. It was so good. Like I just got one with like a vanilla cream filling. Oh, it was del delightful. I've been thinking about it for almost a week. Yeah.